everyone my name is key light and welcome back to my channel so today we're getting into our lesson called the responsibility of those who are called now last sunday we did the reminder now we're doing the responsibility and man responsibility comes with accountability so with that being stated make sure you like comment and definitely subscribe of course you know that i do my translation with the message bible so let's get right into it so today's scripture is going to come from james chapter 2 verse 1 through 12. now the word james actually means a servant of god and i think the most popular james that we basically know is jesus half brother where he didn't really believe in Christ and God at first, but after seeing the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he was definitely a firm believer. Well, we're getting into our lesson where it's gonna be a letter and it's perceived to be someone of Jewish background. However, with this letter, we understand that the message is much broader than a certain uh, demographic. It is going to be a message that can extend from abroad. So first, let's get into James chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. My dear friends, don't let public opinion influence how you live out our glorious Christ-originated faith. If a man enters your church wearing an expensive suit and a street person wearing rags comes right after him, you say to the man in the suit, sit here, sir. This is the best seat in the house. And either ignore the street person or say, better sit here in the back row. Haven't you segregated God's children and proven that you are judges who can't be trusted? So I think this first particular chunk is going to extend not only on like a superficial manner, but letting it be known amongst Christians that we have to do a lot of the work. We have a lot of responsibility and we need to be accountable for our actions. He first says, don't let the world judge others. Don't let the world influence you about what they believe Christ is to be called. There are lots of public opinions about how Christians should behave, how Christians should act, what we should do, what we look like, what we should wear all the time. But I'm here to tell you that the responsibility comes first of all from us. And I actually read this wonderful devotional that brings back this segment about how Christianities are the most divided in churches at 11 o'clock. Sometimes we have our fellow worshipers at churches where it is sometimes segregated, where we only go to a particular church because most of the people will look like us. But we have to make sure and be accountable that Christians come in all colors, all sizes, and they can dress however they would like. They can talk however they like. They can come from any family, any pedigree, because we have to do the work and we're responsible for uniting people, not dividing, not segregating, not telling people that they can't sit here, they can't say this, they can't post that. We have a responsibility amongst each other to not shun or outcast people by the way they look, by the way they act, but also unite each other with the word of Christ. Now let's get into James chapter two, verse five through seven. Listen, dear friends, it isn't clear. Oh, listen, dear friends, isn't it clear by now that God operates quite differently? He chose the world's down and outs as the kingdom's first sentences with full rights and privileges. This kingdom is promised to anyone who loves God. And here you are abusing these same citizen. It is the high and mighty who exploit you, who use the courts to rob you blind. Aren't they the ones who scorn the new name Christian used in your baptisms? And I think it's 
honorable right now that this message is not about how we should treat others, but we have to take a mirror and look in look there as a reflection of ourselves. Are we constantly criticizing each other? Are we criticizing ourselves? God is here for anyone who wants to love, be patient, and have faith. It is not up to us to outcast anyone. And we have to take accountability sometimes when we might do that. We might not go to the person in the church that isn't dressed as well as another person. We not, may not give an opportunity to another person because they did not come from a certain family that was raised in a church. We have to take accountability and make sure to right our wrongs, to make sure to bring people together. Now let's go to James chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. You do well when you complete the royal rule of scriptures. Love others as you love yourself. But if you play up these so-called important people, you go against the rule and stand convicted by it. You can't pick and choose in these things. Specializing in keeping one or two things in God's law and ignoring others, the same God who said don't commit adultery also said don't murder. If you don't commit adultery but go ahead and murder, do you think your non-adultery will cancel out your murder? No, you're a murderer, period. Mm, period. Isn't that wonderful that the message is saying that accountability is the responsibility of us and i think the notion is to love others as yourself and i think we've been missing the mark this entire time maybe sometimes we criticize other people it's because we may not truly love ourselves we may not feel whole that's why we bring other people down we may not feel that we are in the right standing so we criticize other people in the end we have to start by loving ourselves, recognizing that sometimes we have a lot of inner work to do before we can love others like ourselves. If we're mistreating people, or if you see someone mistreating someone else, we take a really good look. Sometimes it's something they're dealing with that's on the inside that counts. We have to do the work, we have to be accountable, and we have to recognize that when we love ourselves, we can love others, we can bring people together, and we can bring people closer to Christ. Now let's end it with James chapter 2, verse 12 through 13. Talk and act like a person expecting to be judged by the rule that sets us free. If you refuse to act kindly, you can hardly expect it to be treated kindly. Kind mercy wins over harsh judgment every time. I think that's wonderful to end it. We have to understand that kindness is going to get us closer to Christ. We can catch more bees with honey than with vinegar. And I think that's the word that I want to leave us for the week or the phrase that I want to leave us for this week. We have to walk in kindness and we have to be accountable in loving ourselves so that we can love others. I hope you all enjoyed the Sunday School lesson for this week. Make sure you like, comment, and definitely subscribe. Until next time.